Hello and welcome to the Cisco DevNet channel. Today we're excited to kick off a new video series that highlights the latest cloud security API features. In today's episode, we will be diving into getting started content together with Yaron Kaspi, API product manager at Cisco. Yaron, thanks for joining us today. Hi, Alexei. Thanks for having me. So we going to talk about how to get started with uh, Umbrella API. Yeah. yeah, what's the first steps? Sure. So in order to start using the different uh, Umbrella API endpoints, well, you first need to get authenticated. Um, let's have a look at what that looks like and maybe start off with, well, with the basics. Let's look at our documentation. OK, great. So in uh, DevNet, we have a cloud security section. It includes both Umbrella and Secure Access APIs. And we're going to look at each of these in a different stream. We're going to start off with Umbrella, um, but really the authentication is pretty much uh, the same for both of them. Um, both are REST APIs and both use Auth2 uh, in order to authenticate uh, access and uh, in order to determine uh, which resources you should have access to. So as you can see, this is a pretty much step-by-step -step guide, right? You have to log in. You have to, uh, of course, know more or less what your use case is. And then you need to create your keys. Let's have a look at what that looks like in practice, right? So this is the umbrella dashboard. We're going to go to admin and then to API keys. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create our own new API key. OK, let's just call this stream one. We can give a meaningful name. We can give you know, a name that is very specific to our integration use case. It doesn't really matter. We can also give a description. And as you can see, it's complete free text. Um, and then comes the really important piece. The really important piece is determining what this key will be able to do. What we've done is we've taken all of our different API endpoints and we've kind of put them together in a few major use cases, right? Things like admin, authentication, deployments, investigate, policies, and reports. These main use cases then help you kind of in terms of your starting point, right? This is where you get started. So for example, if I have a use case that involves getting a list of my roaming computers, maybe my roaming devices, then that would be underneath deployments. So I can either select all of deployments, or if I want to be a bit more accurate and I want some strict provisioning, I can go into deployments, I can pick the specific access scope I'm interested in, in our case, roaming computers, and then determine whether it's going to be a read-only or a read-write. In our case, let's just make it a read-only type of permission. And you know what? Let's do something else. Let's also go into reports and add an access scope around aggregations and some of the granular events that are inside of these reports. As you can see, when I add each access scope, it gets added to this right pane. So you have an understanding, and you can basically control what each API credential can do. Cool. So once we've selected these scopes, the next thing we can do is we can set an expiration date for the API key. Once you hit that date, then you won't be able to make any more API requests until you either extend that date or you create a new credential. And you have another option here around network restrictions. For example, if you want to only allow API access from specific addresses, you can do that as well. Let's go ahead and create our key. Great. And as you can see, when you create the key, you get the API key and the secret. And it's only shown once. 
So you have to copy it and keep it someplace safe. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to basically um, use the key in secret in order, in order to authenticate. Um, so in the previous step, we created our API credential. We gave it some scopes. And as you can see, we got our API key and our API secret. Now we're going to use those in order to request our access token. So what we're doing here is we're basically making a request. In this case, we're using CURL as a API client, but you could use any API client that, that you prefer to use, right? And we're making a request here to api.umbrella.com. Our use case is around authentication, major version v2, and token to get our access token. So what I'm doing, in, I'm basically um, copying the API key. And then I'm going to copy the API secret, close them, and basically make our first API request. Great, we got an access token. This is our access token. No need to be alarmed. It's just base64. And you can see that it expires in 3,600 seconds, in other words, in one hour. So now that we've done that, we can start making our API requests. Just one thing that's worthwhile mentioning. We don't need to get an access token like this for every API request that we make. Within this one hour, we can use the access token here for as many requests as we want, or are as many requests as we're allowed to based on our rate limits. And only towards the end of that hour should you request another access token, right? So that you can continue with the uh, execution of uh, your integration, right? So now let's look at how we can actually use the access token. And we're going to make our first request. Um, so our first, sorry, our first functional request, right? So we're going to make a request here to apiumbrella.com. Our use case is going to be deployments. Again, major version is v2, and we're going to be calling roaming computers. We want to get a list of our roaming computers, OK? And note here that in order to authenticate, we're using the authorization bearer header. And we're just going to plug in the access token that we just got. We're going to close these quotes, make our first request, and there we go. We get a list of our roaming computers. Now, this is a bit difficult to read, so we can pretty print it. I'm using a library called JQ, but you can use whichever method you want, just like JQ, because it's really easy to use across platforms. And you can see now the output is pretty printed. We have a list of the different roaming computers that we have. All right, this is great. Now you can start making your first API requests. See you in the next episode. Yeah, thanks, Yaron.